I, your humble servant, am of Albanian origin, Agazi. I am a falcon of that rocky province. Yaha Bey Dukacini was born in 1498 in Taslacha, today known as Plievlia Montenegro. He hailed from the famous Dukacini family, which John Musaka described in his memoirs as the ruling Albanian dynasty. Their earliest mention appears to include the family's progenitor, a Venetian document dated July 12, 1281, in Orvieto states, Duke Jin Tanushi from Albania, and a certain Greek named Mashid from the high men of the Curia of Peleologus, our enemy, caught by Johannes Coctus. The document later states that Charles I, King of Sicily, ordered a captain to take the prisoners and charge them with treason. With the Treaty of Orvieto ratified soon, after the Byzantine victory over Sicily, it's likely that Duke Jin Tanushi wasn't a captive for long. Regardless, it's obvious the rebellious spirit of the Duke of Jin was present from the very first. Yaha Bey wasn't the highest ranking Duke of Chini in the Ottoman Empire, but today he may be the most famous of them. A Devshima, Yaha went into the Janissary Corps and was promoted to Sapai. He would participate in some of the most decisive campaigns in Ottoman history, including the Battle of Chaldiran, Ottoman Mamluk War, and the Battle of Baghdad. All incredible Ottoman victories. Under Sultan Selim and his son Suleiman the Magnificent, Yaha is soon in the presence of intellectual and influential courtiers, where he would wear his burke or military helmet at gatherings. He was known as a Sahibi Saif U Kalem, a warrior and poet, because of his skills with the sword and pen. He was inspired to write his poem, Yusuf and Zuleha while in Palestine on the road to Mecca. Egypt was also an inspiration for him, especially Cairo, which he called the city of Joseph. Chances are Yaha would have been a vague memory in Ottoman history if it hadn't been for Suleiman the Magnificent ordering the murder of his son, Prince Mustafa. The army and Ottoman citizens knew Prince Mustafa would have been the best choice to lead after Suleiman. Yaha couldn't sit idle and fought back the only way he knew how. He wrote an elegy for Prince Mustafa, brazenly critiquing Suleiman's decision. The poem became a hit with the public. Finally what people were feeling and what many were too frightened to say themselves have been expressed for all to read. Yaha criticizes Suleiman, but aims his pen at the Bosnian Grand Vizier, Rustem Pasha, by calling him out by name. I wish my eyes had never witnessed this ordeal. What a shame, for he didn't deserve such a fate. His body perished from the cruelty of Rustem. Has anyone ever seen or heard of such a thing? How could a sultan so just as Umar take his own son's life? In the mirror of fate appeared the visage of decay. 
He abandoned this world of excess, seeking the path to eternity. Would the truth of Yaha's pen be mightier than execution? Suleiman just had his own son killed. Why would he even flinch to execute Yaha? Grand Vizier Rustem Pasha orders Yaha to his presence, and a tense meeting takes place. Rustem Pasha asks Yaha how he dared to be well one whom the Sultan has condemned. Yaha replies, We indeed condemned him, but we bewailed him with the people. In a fury, Rustem Pasha relentlessly tries to convince Suleiman to approve Yaha's execution. In the end, Suleiman lets Yaha live. The poem would not come without a price. Yaha loses properties and prestige. However, he gains a Zayamet in Zvornik, in present-day Bosnia and Herzegovina, where he will collect a healthy revenue from the cultivated land. Yaha's latter years involved writing, studying Islamic mysticism, and hunting. According to historian Ashik Chelebi, sometimes he fights enemies, participates in battles, sometimes he hunts. He is very old now. Yet after all that happened, Suleiman summons Yaha in 1566 when Yaha would have been around 68 years old to participate in the siege of Zgetva. It's an Ottoman victory where Suleiman the Magnificent would die in his tent before the final assault. Just prior to his death, Yaha presented Suleiman with a poem. Never far from his roots, late in life Yaha writes, the chiefs and nobles of the Albanian kin. Mine, ancient race, the lords of Duca Jean. Some say that Yaha spent his final days in Zvornik. Others claim that he spent his final days in Temeshvar, Romania. Wherever it might have been that Yaha Bey lived, it was there that he eventually died at some point between 1575 in 1582. Yaha Bey Dukacini left behind a modest mosque in Ederne and is regarded as one of the best Dewan poets. His poems are still published to this day. Recently, a new generation has come to discover him through the popular Turkish television series The Magnificent Century. From the bloodline of the most recognized princes in Albanian history to the inner circle of the Ottoman elite. Yaha Bey Dukacini criticized the decision of the most powerful sultan in Ottoman history and survived. His Dukacin ancestors would expect nothing less. In him who is of Albanian origin, there is this distinction. He is like the precious stone found among the rocks. To our precious stone, the poet warrior, Yaha Bey Dukajini.